Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel and today's Saturday special for the Nissan 300C. Welcome back to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. We'll look at car brochures for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. If you think that might interest you, consider subscribing, it be most helpful. Today is your Saturday special, which is, tends to be a shorter version or shorter episode. Um, and today we're going to continue our story, look at the Nissan full range brochure for 1985. And now we're up to the Nissan 300C. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so here it is, the Nissan 300C, what I would consider to be the flagship of the Nissan range at the time, even though there is still one model to come. And as it says, available as a salute or a very rare estate. Uh, these were produced between 1984 and 1987 and was the export version of the Nissan Cedric Y30. Very rare car today for sure, but let's have a look at some of these images. So here it is, like I say, a rare car today for sure. I don't know how many they sold in the UK, but obviously they had some kind of like export restrictions. Um, so they weren't saying they wouldn't have sold like the Bluebirds did when they started being built in the UK. Um, quite an understated design, quite an old fashioned looking design really, particularly with this sort of really weird little extra window in the back. I do like it, but it certainly does date the car and make it look a little bit old fashioned, I think. Very square. And kind of like think of this as being sort of a uh, competition or tried to be a competition for the big German executive cars. Wasn't really successful at doing that, but I think it was certainly equal to those big German cars. Certainly in terms of reliability, I'm sure they were very reliable and they were pretty quick cars as well. I seem to remember these were like 120 mile an hour cars. So even though it's a big square boxy design, not much aerodynamics there is there, but still a big powerful engine. And overall, I do like the design of these a little bit Americanized really for my taste, I guess, but still. I do appreciate them and they're certainly an interesting car for sure. Let's just zoom in on some of the features. As was quite common at the time, headlamp wipers, little tiny little blades on there. Um, only really swiping or cleaning part of that headlight with such a small wiper I would suggest. These were rather nice alloy wheels I think that with a little Z badge on there which is unusual isn't it these chrome lots of chrome around the windows really denoting this as an executive car I guess um, like I said that little unusual extra window in the back look like the big comfortable seats chrome handles at the back a big boot now, I also quite like this as well, actually, this sort of badge on the bonnet there. If I can tune that in, so that big badge on there as well. So quite a striking car, like I say, quite Americanized. It kind of like reminds me of American cars in some ways, but certainly a big executive Nissan. And really, we don't really associate Nissan or the Nissan badge being an executive car, really, do we? They also had this, this very rare estate um, with this very unusual sort of almost like wood looking at the back there. I seem to remember that these had um, seats in the back actually, so kind of like making them a seven seater, they kind of flipped. Um, so it's like, I think they were rear facing actually. So an unusual big car not like the executive car so it wasn't as luxurious actually to the saloon so these i don't believe are i don't think they're um, alloy wheels like that there was as well and i also think there was actually drum brakes at the back where the saloons were um 
disc brakes all round and we'll kind of like see that in the specs in a moment so unusual they kind of like downplayed the estate to be more sort of like a rugged vehicle rather than the executive nature of the saloon so unusual how they did it in two ways like that but anyway let's read some of the text and learn a bit more about them okay so the 300c saloon and estate as it says on here uh, a very advanced and stylish new contender the nissan 300c has joined the luxury executive car market powered by the exceptionally smooth v6 engine used in the new 300 zx sports car the 300c is available as a sumptuous five-seater saloon or as a very capacious estate with seating for up to seven people both cars have a have a very full specification if i can just adjust that a little bit with such items as power steering central door locking a sophisticated three wave band radio stereo cassette system electric window lifters electric remote controls for mirror adjustment boot lid and fuel filler lid opening all fitted as standard the saloon is equipped with a high efficiency air conditioning system so again like a bit of a note to say the saloon was kind of like higher spec than the estate even in the uk um, the 300c saloon had air conditioning which certainly wasn't common in the uk at the time the technical specifications is equally advanced starting with the widely acclaimed nissan vg series engine in three liter form the v6 alloy head unit is fitted with fuel injection and produces 155 bhp in the saloon and 150 bhp in the version fitted to the 300c so again even the engine was kind of like a bit detuned in the estate Saloon versions are equipped with a super smooth four speed automatic transmission in which the highest ratio is an overdrive and a lock up torque converter further aids economy. Estate versions have a five speed manual gearbox in which fifth is an overdrive. The 300C saloon has disc brakes on all four wheels, ventilated discs at the front and the estate has ventilated discs at the front and drum brakes at the rear. I always find that's kind of like weird doing that with the estate. Both cars have independent strut front suspension and an anti-roll bar. The saloon has coil spring rear suspension while to cope with the heavy, heavy load carrying and towing the estate has leaf springs at the rear. So again the estate was really sort of like the rugged version of the 300c and the obviously the saloon was the luxury executive version and once again i do apologize the specification page or the table i should say is very small so you can see they both use that v6 of head camshaft water cooled 2960 cc engine 155 um, bhp on the saloon 150 on the estate electronic injection always an automatic for the saloon and a manual for the estate and like it said before um, power disc brakes all round on the saloon and drums at the back on the estate with that sort of leaf spring quite an old-fashioned leaf spring suspension on the estate as well fuel economy surprisingly very similar um, it looks like the kind of like town driving that the estate is slightly better at uh, the constant 75 the saloon is slightly better and the constant 56 is pretty much identical according to that which is unusual oh yes and i forgot to mention yeah it does confirm the alloy wheels on the saloon steel wheels on the estate so there we go there is the 300 c both as a saloon and estate um unusual cars really i think i'd probably go for the estate because it's a little bit rare i guess the saloon 
is a beautiful car but it's kind of like a little bit too americanized in its design personally for my taste i must admit although it does look good with black and that chrome on and certainly would look amazing at a car show today please let me know in the comments if you do remember these or indeed if you've ever actually been in one i have i remember them but i've never actually driven or be even being a passenger in one of these so i don't know how many were actually sold but i'm sure it wasn't too many Thank you so much for watching today. One more episode to come in this 1985 Nissan range. I wonder if you can remember what that is. Uh, but have a great weekend. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.